Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Philly Beats You and welcome to Pokemon Legends Arceus. It's time, the game is here. I have over a hundred plus hours in this game and this video is basically me using the knowledge that I gained throughout the game to help you guys on your adventure as you begin. So this video is going to be 20 early game tips that you can use in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, don't forget that if there are any tips I don't mention that you are aware of, be sure to drop it down in the comments below and help other people out. Now let's get on into this video and don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe because we're putting out a lot of content like this. Let's get into it. So the first thing I wanted to go over with you guys was the settings. I think settings is the most important thing in the beginning of a game. The tech speed by default is set to fast. Vertical controls are over here. You can put them at regular or inverted depending on how you play. We got the horizontal camera controls as well. Camera sensitivity is here. We got motion sensitivity, which is how sensitive you wish the motion sensor to be. This is depending on how you want to play. Autosave is a thing that is enabled from default in the game. What you want to do is turn this off if you are going to be encountering shinies and trying to see special things throughout the game because the last thing you want to do is see a shiny appear the shiny runs away and it auto saves right after that and you have no way of finding that shiny so i highly suggest to turn it off as there are many methods in this game that involve you saving before something happens hud toggling is disabled by default but i enabled it so you can take screenshots so basically what it is is if you are in the game you can see this hud around me you can see things around but if you press the right analog stick button boom everything goes away. And if you want to put the stuff right back on the screen, just go ahead and click the right analog stick and boom, it's right back. If you wish to just listen to the beautiful natural environment of the Hisui region, go ahead and turn off background music. If you want to enjoy the music, it's very nice on its own as well. Go ahead and turn it on. I keep mine off because I'm a content creator and I need to add my own music that you're listening to instead of having the game music mix up with that. But if you do also turn it off and just have your sound effects on, if there are shinies or certain cries in the game, you can hear them very clearly if you turn up your Pokemon cries all the way. Then you have dynamic range, which is adjusting the ratio between the loudest and the quietest sounds to make it easier to hear. So you can adjust this to narrow or wide, depending on what your preference is. Now that we got the boring settings out the way, let's get into the fun stuff. When you are given the choice of picking a start in the game, you have the option of Rowlet, Cyndaquil, or Oshawott. Now, don't worry. You will be able to get all three starters in this game no matter what. You do not have to trade for them. During the post game, the professor will give you both of the other starters you didn't choose. And you will be able to catch these starters in special overworld events that happen on these maps, which we'll get into in this video. Now, this tip is interesting. When I first started playing this game, I was running around all over this town not realizing that you can select any point on this map to teleport and go there. If I have to exit the map and I'm all the way on the other side, all I have to do is simply just click on the front gate, head to that, and teleport right out to go to the next zone or area in the game. Another very interesting thing about this game is that you can teleport from the galaxy building to somewhere else in town. So if I talk to Celine and I turn in my quest and then she says, go out outside the village, I just have to hit my minus button, click on the front gate, hit yes, It'll take about one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi. Five. Okay, about four to five seconds and you're at the front gate and then you can go on your merry way to another location in the game. When you're starting the game and you're able to talk to the clothing lady, don't forget to claim your special rewards from Pokemon Sword and Shield and Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee if you have that save data on your Switch. So if you want to know what that looks like, this is the festival mask for Pikachu. This is the festival mask for Eevee. And this is pretty much the shaman outfit that you get. If you played Pokemon Sword and Shield, you'll have a post-game shaman quest. And if you played Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, you're going to have a Darkrai quest post-game. This next tip is for people who need to get good at this game. I'm just kidding. Not get good. We all make mistakes and some of us will die in this game. I've died many times in this game and it's been very horrible. This lady over here, if you talk to her, she's going to talk about the shrine and some charms. And if you look at them, if you want to lose fewer items, basically have a charm take the place of your items when you die because you lose a lot of items in the game, this is going to cost 4,000. So the safest way to not lose items is to just go ahead and drop it off at the camp as opposed to just buying these charms. So there's ways around it. Faint less frequently, and that's going to be costing 8,000, <laughs> which is really more expensive. The only option I say to you here is get good at the game so you don't have to spend money on this and stay in good health. That charm is only going to cost you 500 because all it's going to do is just ward off the effects that a Pokemon has on you. Those things literally last about 
five seconds max you get poisoned and then it just goes away as you start to slowly go away sleep and and paralysis it, it wears off pretty quick so that's why this one is the cheapest charm but again if you're struggling in the game and having a hard time charms are the way to go and if you're just a very rich player and don't want any mistakes to happen to you while you're exploring collecting catching pokemon go ahead and buy these charms Sometimes it's very easy to forget that your Pokemon can learn new moves all the time. So if you go into your inventory of Pokemon, you go to change moves, you'll be able to see the different moves that my face is blocking. You'll be able to see the different moves that Driftbloom has that you can swap out with its current move set. So all Pokemon will learn different moves and it won't ask you, would you like to replace it like the old Pokemon games? In fact, you can just grab one of the new moves and replace it out with one of the other moves and you don't lose anything. They're always there forever. The Pokemon knows them. Now, there's another way of getting moves in this game. Head over to the training grounds. When you arrive here, go up to Zisu and she's going to ask you, hello there, Survey Corpse Recruit. Did you need something from me? And you're going to say that you want new moves. She's then going to select or ask you which Pokemon that you want. And I'm going to select the Drift Room here. And you're going to see over here, it's all the moves that you can buy and add on to your Drift Bloom. And they cost money. But once it's added to your Drift Bloom's move pool, it's going to be there forever on this Drift Bloom. And it's going to know every single thing. All you have to do is swap out the moves you want at certain times. So this is a very strategic thing you can do before certain battles with certain people. So if you're fighting a dragon Pokemon, maybe throw some ice moves on it. If you're fighting a flying Pokemon, throw some electric moves on it. So you can play around with that. This applies to all Pokemon. Also, Quick another mention to you guys, alpha Pokemon in the wild, when you catch them, will always have an extra one of these moves that you will be able to buy. So instead of buying it, the alpha Pokemon will already have it in their move pool, if that helps. And you will always see that as their fourth slot when you do battle them. One of the most important tips that I can tell you guys is complete the research level task for the Pokedex on the Pokemon as soon as you see them and as you encounter them right away. You do not want to do it halfway, get to the end and realize you have to go back and do all of them to get them to research level 10. I made that mistake and I have to do so many Pokemon in a row back to back to back. I just spent hours and that made the game for a very small bit of time unfun. So if you do want to enjoy and not be suffered with that tedious task, do them as you discover each of the Pokemon. So if you see a Bidoof, look at what it has to do, zoom in on it open its Pokedex, read what you have to do to get it to level 10. Then when you see some Starlies, go ahead and do all the Starly research quests and you can see what they have to do. As you evolve them, they're going to be more research quests. So you're going to just keep doing them as you unlock each zone. That way, you're not going to get overwhelmed with it. I'm telling you, it is one of the worst experiences in the game I've, that I've had is, is waiting till the end and then compiling it all together. So if you take it nice and slow, do all the Pokemon research levels as you see them in the game, in order it's going to be a very fun time it's going to feel filling and the game is going to go a lot smoother speaking of getting your pokemon's research to 10 on the pokedex this just came out from one of the reputable data miners in the pokemon community anubis and this is insane so when you get level 10 on a pokemon you get a plus one shiny roll if you do every single task it'll then say perfect which will then cause a total of three shiny rolls. As you can see on my Bidoof, I have done every single task possible. So I got a perfect and it shows a little star icon next to the Pokeball. That's how you know it's done. Now the evolution, I have not done everything. I've just completed at level 10. So it's interesting that you get a total of three rolls when you do that. Now, if you get level 10 on all the Pokemon within the game, you then will be able to get the shiny charm, which gives another plus three shiny rolls. Mass outbreaks, which is a method that I go over in another video, is a plus 25 rolls automatically every time you do it. Hence why I probably got a lot of shinies from doing it. Now for the bottom part, I'm not gonna read everything on the list. You can just screenshot it if you need to, but I'm gonna go to the mass outbreak and read that it's a one out of 158 chance of it being shiny. Just doing that alone, no shiny charm, no research level 10, no dex research perfect, no shiny charm, just nothing. Just mass outbreaks alone is a one out of 158 chance of it being shiny. If you want the easiest shinies in the game, which is a little bit better than 158, but it's just 128, you're going to have to have dex research level 10 on all the Pokemon, so complete all the tasks. Dex research perfect, so literally every single task in the game. Then get your shiny charm, and then you can go ahead and do the mass outbreaks. So dex research level 10 leads to shiny charm doing everything on the dex leads to dex research perfect and mass outbreaks are just always there from the quest number six in the game all static encounters including the starters all legendaries mythicals and all gifts are shiny lock so 
there's the answer to your question, guys, about what is shiny locked, what is non-shiny. Another very interesting thing in the game is to pay attention to when you get these things called mass outbreaks. As you can see, you will be able to get this showing up on your map after you do quest number six. In this case on the map, you saw a Shinx in the first area. I don't have any map or other areas unlocked anywhere else in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and head over to the Shinx outbreak. So I'm just going to let you enjoy this clip of myself going to get the shiny. So uh, enjoy. Yo, it's, oh my, it's shiny Shinx, shiny Shinx. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I got this at the beginning of a game. Oh, the sparkle. Oh my God. This is so cool. Oh my goodness. Shiny Shinx at the beginning of a game. Let's go. Okay. First area shiny. Look at this. Go, go, go. Slow. For the berry. Come on. Come on. Yes! If you want to get shiny Pokemon like that and get a lot of them, well, you can flex on a lot of people early game if you do watch the next video in this playlist, which is called mass outbreak shiny hunting guide go ahead and check it out i literally go into the full breakdown of how to get shiny pokemon and get a lot in just a couple of hours so go ahead and watch that shiny hunting tips are always the best tips and this was my favorite one of this video there are power leveling areas on this map that you can use your team for if you have a fire type pokemon or a flying type pokemon this is a very good area to farm because you have beauty flies that are pretty much at level 20 so you can pretty much farm your team here easily up to level 20 by fighting them at nighttime you're gonna have a bunch of mothams that spawn so it's a great spot over here now side note this is also where you can catch pichu in the game it is considered a rare spawn another great area that you can head into is over here on your map you can sneak past this at the beginning of the game from south of aspiration hill just go down this pathway you're going to have to go through a alpha snorlax on the way here here he is big boy alpha snorlax it is level 45 if you do get past that alpha snorlax shouldn't be too hard you're going to be encountering a lot more higher level pokemon now when you encounter higher level pokemon and begin to start catching them you're going to get much more xp by doing this as you can see here are level 15 star avias we're over here we have luxury at level 30 so just very very op pokemon in the beginning of the game higher than the beautiflies that you would fight at floral gardens here now there's more pokemon if you come down over here you have abras that are spawning over here more luxuries if you want to catch fight or defeat them so you can kind of power level in this area as well early game and then over here you have an alpha alakazam if you want to take this guy out you're going to need dark moves a lot of guts you're going to need a lot of guts to take out this alakazam and this is just south of Aspiration Hill, past the Snorlax right over here, Alpha Snorlax. And you'll be able to find a lot more higher level Pokemon here before you even cross the bridge or have access to go across it. Sometimes you will bump into random Alpha Pokemon that just spawn in a group. Like this Shinx is not always going to be Alpha, but it happens to be Alpha in this case. This Shinx is level 17. You get good rewards for fighting some of these Alpha Pokemon. So I'm just going to get engaged in battle and tell you what we're going to get from this. Okay, we defeated the Shinx and we got Experience Candy Small and some nice Grit Dust. It can be used to raise effort levels only up to level 3. So if I was to use this to power up maybe one of my starters, for example, I can choose to improve its level. Maybe I want to go for Rowlet's Attack since it's going to end up being a Grass Fighting. Hit that and Rowlet gains a level and Rowlet's attack is now a lot more stronger than it was before. So there are some nice rewards from fighting these alpha Pokemon, experience, things like that. Now to get the highest form of XP in the first area, all you have to do is be able to head over to the Obsidian Falls. You do not have to be crazy high level or have any other mounts to get over there. I could, You could do this with the first mount you get. Uh, so go ahead and head over there. All of this pathway. And when you get close to this tunnel area, you're going to try to climb up on this hill. So just go ahead, copy what I do, start galloping, jumping. Eventually, we're going to make it. So we're going to go up here, up here, up here. One more time, and we are up. Once you go up here, 
you're going to see there is a Chansey over here. You're going to find out that there is a Machoke. Uh, these guys are literally level 40s. So there are level 40s in this first area. There's literally Machokes all over the top of this hill over here. Luckily, the Machokes don't run up on you. This one's level 43, and this one is 41. So pretty high level Pokemon up here. Now, if we continue going down this way, you're going to notice one of the best leveling Pokemon in the game. It is Blissey standing right over here. She is vicious. She is fierce. She's level 62. The only way to do great amount of damage to this thing is to have a ghost Pokemon. Um, Blissey will continue to use soft foil and heal itself all the time. I'm already getting wrecked over here. I'm not even going to try to fight this Blissey right now, but it is pretty OP. So if you need to come back here, take a look at your map. I'm on top over here. This is where you can farm Blissies in the game if you have high enough level to do so. And you can farm the other Pokemon that are level 40 up here as well. The next tip that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the space time distortion rifts that show up on your map. You'll get a notification and this will happen after you beat Cleaver and enter the second area. But they will start to spawn in every area you go. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to show up. But once it shows up, you'll get this cool looking bubble thing on your map. And what you want to do is head over into it and you're going to know when you walk into it by this instance happening. As you walk in, you're then going to see some crazy things happen. A lot of items are going to spawn on the ground and you're going to see a lot of Pokemon. Now, what you want to focus on is picking up these items and possibly catching the rare Pokemon, but mostly grab the rare items. So you're going to pick these up. Like, look at this. Oh boy. Like there's a Haunter. There's an Earthstring. Oh my gosh, I need to pick up this item. Okay, there's an Earthstring here. You can see there's an Eevee. So I'm just going to give you an example of what it's like to run and try to survive in these. I'm picking up a Red Shard here. There is a Sneasel that is the original form. And these shards are going to be used with crafting recipes to craft something even better that you can sell for higher amounts of money. So basically, you want to grab all these things here and just keep going. You're going to notice some Pokemon that spawn in these rifts do not despawn. These are going to be the rare Pokemon of the area. These are the distraction Pokemon. And that is an Alpha Lickitung that just spawned. There are some scary Pokemon here. And oh my god, you Steelix just spawned. What the heck? That is Alpha Steelix. I'm not messing with that. Now, I see another item over here. I picked it up. That is an Electrolyzer. I can evolve Electivire, which is a pretty cool thing. So you get evolution items here. You get some great drops here. So I'm going to show you what happens when you, you try to catch something. So I'm just going to... A little bit a little bit tough here. Okay, so I stun Gengar enough. But like, look how aggressive these Pokemon are. So Gengar is stunned right now, and he's gone. Now you can see a Leafeon spawn. A lot of Evolution spawn as well. You get Leafeons here for free. Um, you can get Eevee's evolution just like this. By the way, the level of the Pokemon within one of these rifts are dependent on your ranking. I'm pretty much 9-star as I'm making this video. I have not beaten the game fully. But if you're lower level, they will spawn as lower level. Once you pick up the items within a space-time dimension rift thing, you're good to go. Um, especially if you don't need any of the Pokemon here. These are the distraction Pokemon again. Every single zone will have its own Pokemon that spawn. And that was a distortion space rift. Actually crazy insane, but you get a lot of cool items from it. Now there is a crafting recipe that you can get in the game that you combine Stardust with three of the shards, blue, red, and green. And you can get something called a star piece, which you can sell for higher money. So when you are in these space time rifts, make sure to grab everything and save them all. And then when you can create the crafting recipe later, you can sell it for a lot of money. By the way, these space time rifts are also going to be useful for catching starters in them, catching Porygon in them, and catching the fossil Pokemon in them. Now, I'm going to go into a whole different video talking about the dimensional rifts and where to get each one of them, but this is just a little taste of what the space dimensional rifts are like. In the game, you'll sometimes get these random items called spoiled apricorns. When you hit apricorn trees, you'll find things called balls of mud or even snowballs, which all do the same thing. If you throw these at aggressive Pokemon or any Pokemon, it'll stun them. So if I hit this Ponyta, look at that. Ponyta's completely stunned and completely open to be caught in a Pokeball. So I can just hit the back and you can get a critical capture on a Pokemon just like that. You can do the same thing for Pokemon who like running away from you. So there you go. I just hit this Eevee. And just like that, you can catch a rare Eevee as well. Now, Buizels are aggressive and Buizels will come at you and attack. So if you have a Pokemon that does try to attack you, just go ahead. Take a dodge or two and then just hit it once. 
and you can catch it without even really trying to go into battle with it. So you can avoid battle complete with a Pokemon if you do end up stunning them. Now, here is something really cool. Here is the Alpha Rapidash in Zone 1, level 40. And as you get your rank up, you should be able to catch this Pokemon and have it obey you. Now, what I'm going to do is just use this really cheap early item, not really engage in battle with it. And I'm going to show you how cool this is. So I'm just throwing some of these spoiled Apricorns at it, dodging this. It takes quite a bit of these, but it does work with spoiled Apricorns. Look at that. I'm, I'm, I'm going through all these. There you go. It just got weak. So I weakened an Alpha Rapidash here. And I'm just going to chuck an Ultra Ball at it. You get your Ultra Ball as you get to rank. It's that simple. It's that simple to catch an Alpha Pokemon. Okay, he's stunned. And I'm just going to go hit him in the back with a Pokeball. Can we get him in a Pokeball? Level 45. That's going to be tough. And we gained a lot of XP. We were able to do it with, <laughs> with a Pokeball. So you can use these cheap items to stun Alpha Pokemon. And when your rank is high enough, you should be able to catch it. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I hope these tips really help you on your journey in Pokemon Legends Arceus. My name is Philly Beats You, and I will see you guys in the next video. Don't forget to join the Discord. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. All the socials are down below. I will see you guys in the next one. Videos are pumping out. Let's do this.